that says it is okay for people to push for allegiance to a foreign country. Congresswoman Omar caught on tape making vile anti-Semitic remarks suggesting that Jewish Americans hold dual allegiance to the U.S. and Israel. Republicans pushing for Omar to be removed from the House of Foreign Affairs Committee over the controversy. Democrats don't have the vote to even use censor. Anyway, joining us now is former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, for reaction. And by the way, the host of the new podcast, Newt's World. Um, what does it mean about a Democratic Party that has a severe bigotry, racist, and anti-Semitic problem and can't get enough votes to condemn it? Well, I think it tells you how strong the forces of the left are now. Uh, there's a deep anti-Semitic, anti-Israeli bias on the left. Uh, there are a lot of people on the left who'd be very happy if Israel disappeared tomorrow uh, and who feel 100 percent on the side of Hamas, even while it's firing rockets at Israeli cities. Uh, so I think what we've seen is over the last 30 years a growth in the anti-Semitic behavior on college campuses and a growing willingness uh, by some Democratic politicians to be very openly anti-Semitic and anti-Israel. And I think the second thing is that a lot of the younger militant members, whether they're anti-Israel or not, they are deeply opposed to Nancy Pelosi trying to exercise any discipline well, at all. she's not the speaker so anymore, clearly. Pelosi is about... Yeah, she's not... The, I, mean... Well, I mean, she's clearly losing... Look, she is losing control of the House... Uh, they may be forced in a desperation move to change the House rules to block Republicans from offering anything, uh, which would, I think, lead to chaos. But she she can't get her party to stay together. And if, if you're in a moderate district, if you're in a district that Trump carried, uh, or if you're in a district that's heavily Jewish, and you're watching the Democrats go crazy, and you are a Democratic freshman running for re-election, this has to be a really decisive moment. All right. Who do you let stay me, with? Let me I mean, ask you, you this. You know, no. So you come to power with the Republicans for the first time in 40 years. <clears throat> you and Bill Clinton decided you wanted to do great things for the country, and you ended up doing it. And I'm not a big fan of Bill Clinton, but you did balance the budget, uh, which we haven't done since, and a, and a lot of and welfare reform, so many big things. He even said the era of big government is over, end of welfare as we know it. You guys found a way to govern, even though you had opposing views. You see now the Russia collusion narrative is collapsed. So now they just move on to the next thing, which is the widest net ever cast to basically look into any and all things Trump rather than govern. How does that end? Well, I think it's going to end very badly. Yeah. But but let me be clear. This is this is not an investigation. This is an act of hate. These are people going... They're basically saying, if you worked for Donald Trump as a private citizen, we're going to try to destroy you. We're going to make you hire lawyers. We're going, we're going to make you go through public humiliation. I mean, these are normal, everyday folks who are not in the political arena. They're going to call in front of some of these committees... And the most radical, vicious, nasty liberal Democrats are going to feel that they have a right to beat them up, to humiliate them, to lecture them. Um, and I think this tells you, I mean, we're, we're moving. I was thinking about, you know, James Tarantino wrote The Hateful Six. He could have written, you know, The Hateful Eight for the Democratic Committee chairman uh, and made a movie out of it. But we're, we have never seen, at least not since the Civil War, the kind of deliberate, vicious, Character assassination, not just at the you know, not at the president. President Trump's a big guy. If they want to fight with him, he can fight back. You know, it, it, They're going after everyday folks. It, it, you know, when Adam Schiff right. hires, when the author of the Steele dossier, Christopher Steele, doesn't support his own dossier, but Adam Schiff hires the only conspiracy theorist and person that does believe it, that tells you a lot. But, you know, it, when David Axelrod says... This is beginning to look like a witch hunt. This is like, and, and Mayor Bloomberg says, this lurch to the left, not going to end well. Um, when people like that are saying things like that, I think if I was a Democrat, I might listen. But I don't see any hope that they ever would. 
Well, you don't know what's going to happen yet, because the truth is, as all these candidates line up to run for president, I, I don't think any of them want to get in a fight where the left hates them, is taking them on. So you see, over 100 Democrat House members have co-sponsored a bill that eliminates any private sector insurance. That's a 15 percent position. Uh, yeah. You're going to see a Democratic Party unacceptable to most Americans. No cows, no planes, no cars, no combustion engines. Everything's free, and we're going to confiscate all your money. Great idea. Um, well, and, and, no, and, no, and no children. Remember? Oh, yeah. You've you got to think twice about ever having any kids. And the world's ending in 12 years.